Hello my dear friends, you're in the military summary channel and this short video we're going to discuss the most important events that took place during the previous night at the local time. And first I would like to discuss with you the Kharkiv direction. Today we got more details about the strike that took place few days ago. If you remember just yesterday we discussed the video. On this video we can see the Russian drone flying above the area. The Russians managed to discover a significant concentration of Ukrainian proxy Ukrainian forces, those who were attacking the territory of Russian Federation during the uh, uh, second part of um, March and the Russians as a result of Tornado airstrike uh, reduced the camp to ruins. And later we got some more or less reliable sources details about losses from the Ukrainian side and today uh, somebody summarized the entire situation. Uh, somebody posted the uh, on the local telegram chats, the local telegram channels information about the casualties and the sources are saying that during the, uh, during the entire night of the day of a strike the Ukrainians were evacuating wounded soldiers from the area and the losses and the evacuation was around thir thir uh, 300 soldiers so significant number of losses up to one battalion was destroyed as a result of Russian attack now let's move to the situation on the ground we have a lot of very interesting updates uh, first let's talk about the area uh, in the vicinity of Priyutina during the previous 24-48 uh, uh, hours the Russians conducted another offensive operation that was repelled by the forces of 127th Territory Defense Brigade of Armed Forces of Ukraine. The Russians for those attacks uh, were using significant number of armored vehicles, one, two tanks, uh, three, four personnel carriers. That attack was repelled by the Ukrainians. The Russians um, during that attack managed to discover the Ukrainian positions and I expect the next few days additional let's say fpv drone bombings and attacks against the ukraine forces the russians were moving something like this uh, from priyutsna towards the northern positions the direction of these three lines but the attack was repelled so the russians were trying to improve their area between the uh, let's say water barriers very interesting details continue coming from Novomikhailovka direction. During the previous night we got the confirmed information from two reliable sources. The Syriac, for example, confirms that the Russians have managed to cross to cross the fields between this residential area, Mashina Budavnik and the farms. And basically by Syriac the Russians just entered the territory. And the reliable Russian sources reported that the Russians managed to uh, bypass the area completely and to complete establish complete and full control over uh, this Mashina uh, Budavnik, Mashina Straitsel residential area, forcing the Ukrainians to fall back. So this is the second day in a row when we continue receiving updates about significant Russian progress in the area of Novomikhailovka. Obviously, as we discussed in the previous, the days of Novomikhailovka are numbered and so let's wait what is going to be next. Now we are moving further to the north in direction of Georgievka. We have additional reports from different mappers confirming additional Russian progress in the area of the village. And according to different mappers, including neutral and pro-Russian, the, during the previous uh, 48-24 hours, the Russians managed to establish control over this part of the village. And this is obviously significant progress of the armed forces of Russian Federation. The most important is that the Russians answered the the residential area the central part and the russians managed to cut to establish control over this school this is the school and the russians basically managed to cut uh, this uh, village into a few pieces i'll remind you that just yesterday we received very interesting video also from kuraha water reserver on this video we can see the accurate strike of russian uh, missile or maybe uh, some air bomb like fab 500 or 1500 and as a result of strike the bridge the railroad bridge that connected one side and another site of Koraha water reservoir was destroyed. So, of course, which uh, has very significant effects, uh, affected significantly the uh, supply and support of Ukrainian forces either in Maximilianovka and Georgievka. Now we are moving further to the north, in direct to the north of Krasnogorovka. We have additional reports from the area between Nivoyska and Krasnogorovka. The Ukrainian sources published a video of FPV drone bombing of Ukrainian positions, of Russian positions by 111th uh, Territory Defense Brigade. On this video we can see just the explosions, maybe FPV drone strikes and on uh, uh, some ammo depot among the, along the tree line. Anyway, different mappers uh, based on that video adjusted their map showing this territory under complete Russian control. So uh, according to this information we can make a conclusion that for 
for now the russians are moving uh, towards the water reservoir and water barriers uh, to the west and the russians are trying to establish and move something like this so the uh, northern uh, krasnogorovka offensive operation has already started it's not like uh, there is no such a big progress but anyway we see step by step the russians are moving very important updates are coming from Pervomaiska. once again different mappers confirms the russian progress in the area including pro-ukrainian deep state and according to most of the mappers including reliable not reliable neutral pro-russian pro-ukrainian and many many others uh, we can say that the russians established complete control over the central part and that according to that territory update we see that ukrainians control just maybe 15 percent of the village uh, and also later right before i start making the video the russian sources reported that ukrainians decided to withdraw their positions and they abandoned pervomaiska completely towards the village by the name of nitailova so for now we are not going to change the map we need more reliable let's say updates but uh, very likely very likely that uh, by the morning of the 30th of march this territory of pervomaiska is in the gray zone so let's wait addition for additional updates but anyway we see that uh, the situation for the ukrainian stronghold between the fields between pervomaiska and nivoiska is in a very big danger currently due to the russian progress this uh, let's say stronghold is already located in uh, maybe even operational encirclement or even maybe in a cauldron very likely the ukrainians will abandon this artillery pocket within the next 48 hours as well this will allow the russians to maintain the gray zone to maintain the line of combat contact to shorten uh, the line of combat contact to release additional forces and the russians will be able to send the released free forces to, let's say to other areas so anyway we see the bad the battle for Pyromaiska is about to end and then the battle for on uh, Nitailova and uh, Karlovka are going the battles are going to start we haven't received anything from Berdych I'll remind you just yesterday we discussed the first use of robots in this area but so we have some certain activity of the Russians along the railways towards Achiretina on this video we can see the Russians were bombing and attacking the territory with the use of TAS flamethrower systems and as a result of those attacks the Ukrainians had significant losses maybe this is a part of artillery preparation before further offensive operation on the ground so let's wait because once again the russians are about to finish the battle for the western part of the western fields from toninka orlovka Semyonovka, berdichi also probably maybe the russians have already captured them we just haven't received any reports from Ministry of defense and now the russians think what to do next and very likely the next target is a chiretina along the railway so maybe this is the beginning of this operation uh, now we are moving to Bakhmut Artemov's direction. We haven't received anything anything important from the line between Klishevka, Ivanovska, Bogdanovka, the regular activity during the night. We got uh, more clarifications about the Russian attack towards Razdolovka. If you remember, yesterday we got for the first time since the in increased activity in the area some reports about the Russian attempts to attack towards Razdolovka. But we didn't have any, let's say, reliable updates where exactly the Russians were attacking. Today we got according to different mappers the approximately more or less reliable uh, let's say report about the russian progress during the previous 48 hours and according to information we have the russians managed to establish control and to reach this river uh, currently i can't tell you the title of the river maybe it will show us if we zoom in better no there is a, a short river this is it uh, maybe it's vasikovka maybe it's vasikovka that goes uh for vasikovka and then it vasikovka bypassed let's say uh a few railways roads and then it's go there but anyway the russians managed to answer and as you can see the russians very likely according to report will try to cross the area and will try to attack Razdolovka from behind so today we expect additional reports from the russian side from the area furthermore we got uh, activity of the russians between vasikovka sakavansetti and fedorovka on this video we can see the russian the russians attacking the ukrainian positions in the forest with multiple launch rocket systems or with the toss flamethrower systems very likely this is that was a part of artillery preparation and very likely 
likely the Russians will try to attack in this area as well. And if the Russians are able to do this, they will try to establish a strong foothold on this bank of Vasikovka river. And after that, the Russians will be able to continue movements further to Fyodorovka. So approximately we can see more or less the first signs of possible offensive operation to Siversk from the south. We haven't received anything from Bilogorovka from the south in Kupin's direction as well as from the north in Kupin's direction. A Belgrade area, we have just additional reports about the situation with the power plants. And uh, today the sources reported and confirmed that uh, Zmiivska power plant was completely destroyed in Kharkiv area. But the Ukrainians managed to restore the electricity in Kharkiv uh, thanks to uh, the energy facilities, energy infrastructure in the area. So very likely the next few days we can expect the Russian attacks on the Ukrainian energy facilities that support the transferring of electricity from the uh, western part of Ukraine to the eastern and as soon as the Russians destroy these let's say energy facilities then Kharkiv will um, go to the darkness until the Russians enter let's say in, in uh, some period of time so Kharkiv will be completely cut off from everything. Furthermore, the sources reported that on the March uh, 30th, uh, we, the Ukrainians started uh, turning off uh, the entire regions of Ukraine in the eastern part. If you take a look at this map, you're going to see that there are two colors. The blue one is the area with electricity and no problems with energy supply. And the eastern part is the area where the Ukrainians start uh, cutting the entire towns, buildings and regions from the electricity and from support. Uh, now we are moving further to the west. Uh, we have additional updates from the Zaporozhye area. Uh, the Russians, uh, let's say, started to uh, increase their activity, intensify their actions in the area. On this video, for example, we can see the Russians managed to discover the concentration of Ukrainian forces in Arekhov. And as a result of a fab uh, strike, the entire block was damaged and not reduced to ruins. And as a result of those attacks, the Ukrainians suffered significant losses. As you can see, this is the consequences. These are the consequences of a bombing. Of bombs and the entire buildings were damaged uh, let's say the uh, buildings were the concentration of ukrainian forces and uh, it's not it it doesn't mean anything that the russians are planning to attack no they just uh, managed to discover the concentration of forces and just attack them and uh, uh, now we are moving to uh, kiev we have few more additional updates about zelensky uh, we have report that Zelensky required demands the help from the Western countries, and he's saying that uh, Russia uh, can um, that uh, they can use uh, up to eight thousand uh, rounds of so artillery rounds per day, but currently they can use just two thousand rounds, and everything depends, of course, on the United States of America. And he also added that if the United States of America is not going to restart helping the Ukrainians, then they will be forced to fall back slowly, step by step. But the Ukrainian will fall back. The Russians have improved their one of the most dangerous and mass mass use missile Ha-101, and uh, the Russians managed to increase the military, the explosive part of missile from 450 kilos to 800 kilos. The Russians were forced to reduce the distance of this missile, but now the missiles can uh, fly just 2,200 kilometers. This missile used to fly 5,500. But when talking about Ukraine, it's enough uh, for 2,200 kilometers. But it's better to increase the military military explosive part and the Russians did that. So as you can see the situation in Ukraine is getting worse and worse and uh, during the next uh, few weeks obviously we're gonna see the fall of a uh, lot of towns and cities all of the line of combat contact and new titles and new villages will appear in the summaries of, of every single mapper of every single reporter and so on. And that's it for today to the short video military summary channel reminds they condemn many violence in the world. Thank you for watching subscribe to my channel put your likes to my patron and have a good day bye bye